More than 45 launches are needed to build the International Space Station. The crews for these missions all share a common spirit for adventure and a passion for the work that they do. And we do have live TV from the suit-up room. Our mission commander, Bob Cabana, is making his fourth trip into space. 51-year-old astronaut Bob Cabana has logged over 1,000 hours in space, including the first mission to build the International Space Station. How's everybody doing? I just wanted to fly airplanes when I was young. I always had this desire to fly. You know, I could never get rid of it. When I'm looking at this spaceship there on a pad, it's fueled and it's venting and it's creaking and it's like it's alive. And you say, I can't believe in three and a half hours, I'm gonna be inside there taking off into space. MPD, you're clear to launch and have a great mission. Thank you very much. I mean, those main engines crank up and the whole orbit kind of moves forward from it and then back, and then when it hits the vertical, the solid's like. It's shaking and vibrating, and you're trying to read the gauges, and you're being pushed back in your seat. And you just remember this sense of speed. It's just a sense of acceleration. There's a bang and a flash, and you see the solids fall away. And uh, then you're just on those three main engines, better than a third of a million pounds of thrust in each one. It's hard to breathe. You've got a 3G acceleration, and you hear this bang as you're separating from the tank, and you hear these 800-pound thrusters going off. It's like a cannon. It's a boom, boom, and it's shaking and vibrating, and you're in space. And it's, uh, it's quite a ride. In the space shuttle's 20-year history, only now does it satisfy its original charter to be a transport vehicle between Earth and an orbiting research facility. The International Space Station is the culmination of this program. Orbiting the globe 16 times a day, it serves as a platform for our return to the moon and for the future manned exploration of Mars. When complete, it will be visible from nearly any point on Earth and our children will never know a time when we did not live in space. We're living in a time where the domain of the dreams are no longer relegated to the pages of science fiction books. We're living in a time where we can actually make that a reality. We look behind the unopened door when we build a space station. We peer into this vast unknown, into this vast creation, and we understand both our significance and our insignificance, and that's what we want to do. If we're not pushing the limits and going boldly where no one has gone before, we stagnate as a culture. Life in zero gravity is a whole step of evolution. Can we have a baby in zero gravity? Will it develop properly? Or will it be a new organism at that point that perhaps can't return? I see the space station as something that it gives us hope that what we call our backyard is more than just our tiny little speck we call Earth. Our backyard is, in fact, the solar system. These are dreams that inspire children to become scientists, that inspire people to think beyond themselves. We don't know what's out there, but history has taught us that what we find will be of much greater value than the things we thought we would find. And I can't imagine us as human beings turning our back on exploring. <laughs>